25 MBA programs coming in and share information about their programs. We also have current students talking about their MBA experiences. And finally, we also have admission consultants and experts weighing in on your profiles on the GMAT Club chat. Our recent chat just ended. Today, uh, join me in welcoming Kara from the Chicago Boot School of Business. Kara, why don't you take it away? Great, thank you, Sirvik. Hi, everybody, nice to see you. Uh, my name is Kara Northcutt. I'm the Senior Director of Employer Engagement and Admissions uh, for Chicago Booth's full-time and evening and weekend programs. And I'm joined by my colleague, Anna Chalfin. She's an Associate Director of Admissions. She'll be helping answer questions on the chat. So we look forward to engaging with you. Um, we know we have people from all over the world, so we um, appreciate you joining us early, late, whatever it may be in your day. Uh, before I really dive into the you know kind of meat of the presentation, just a few kind of top of mind uh, COVID-19 related updates. As you probably expect and assume and, and know for the, our spring quarter that started a couple months ago, back in March, we did very quickly transition to a fully online format. And we were very um, thrilled with how this went. We've been serving our students, our faculty quite a bit, and they've been having a strong experience so far. So just a testament to how this community really rallied around each other. Uh, we also decided a few weeks back that, the, that we have a summer quarter, which is a little bit unique. Um, our summer quarter is also fully online, um, but for autumn quarter, which might be more top of mind for some of you and thinking about next year, um, is still to be determined. So we are looking at every option from fully in person to um, you know fully online and dual modalities, et cetera. So by the end of June, we will have a you know publicly available update for how we're going to manage the the autumn quarter. Um, but we are, no matter what that format that takes, we are deeply committed to ensuring all of our international students are able to participate, even if it has to be virtually. As, as you know, probably uh, on the international side, uh, there are many challenges out, outside of all of our control with embassies being closed and visa processing. So again, you know, keep an eye out. We know there are a lot of questions about autumn uh, quarter, so we'll keep you updated, but just wanted to you know, initially address some of those questions. Um, and then also relatedly, when it comes to the admissions process, there have, have been no changes to what Booth is requiring, which I'll go into a little more later, but we're, we are requiring of a GMAT and GRE. Uh, that has not changed, but there are now online versions, as you might be familiar. Um, I realize most of you are probably looking at applying for the next year, but just in case um, some of you are um, kind of in that process right now, uh, awaiting decisions with submitted apps and that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into a lot of information, I'll start pretty high level about Chicago Booth. So Booth really truly is a, a global network and community. So we currently have over 50,000 alumni in over 110 countries across the world. And they represent all industries from consulting, brand management, government, nonprofit, really anything you're interested in, you're most likely going to uh, find an, an alumni that, that you can connect with and, and learn from their experiences. And it's an incredibly supportive and responsive group. Uh, I've been working for Booth now for almost 12 years, and I've blindly emailed hundreds of alumni at this point, and I'd say I have a 99% return rate and typically, response rate rather, typically within like 24 hours. So just a testament to having that, you know, Chicago Booth, that EDU email really gives you a connection to a lot of really phenomenal people uh, across the globe that, that are certainly a part of your experience as a current student, um, and then of course, as an alumni as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about our, our footprint that we have across the world. So Chicago Booth has two campuses in Chicago. One of them is downtown. If you've ever been to Chicago, it's on like uh, Michigan Avenue and the river, essentially. So this is called the Gleacher Center. This is home of our evening, weekend, and executive MBA programs, as well as a, a conference center. Um, but I always like to point that out because even though today I focus a lot more on the full-time side, but a lot of full-time students live downtown Chicago and often take advantage of this downtown campus as well, either for a class or for studying during the day, et cetera. Um, and then of course the main Booth campus is on the main University of Chicago campus in uh, Hyde Park. It's about seven to eight miles south of downtown. It's a beautiful neighborhood, beautiful and kind of quintessential um, Gothic architecture campus of, and at the U of C. That's where the Harper Center is located. So you kind of get the best of both worlds with both neighborhoods and downtown that you get to be a part of. And we also have campuses in London and in Hong Kong, primarily for our executive MBA students. Um, but of course, we just like to make, make you aware of what we have. And then even kind of uh, zooming out from that, the University of Chicago has 
academic and research, research centers in Delhi, Paris, and Beijing. And these centers just really help connect scholars, faculty, um, graduate students in those areas to be able to continue researching, collaborate, and focus on you know, things in, in Asia specific or Euro European specific um, issues and topics. So again, it's a global footprint that you'll really have access to as, as a student and alumni. And we're really, really proud to have um, this sort of represent physical representation across, across the globe. And as I mentioned, today we'll you know, primarily have a focus on the full-time programs, knowing that's what many of you are interested in. But I do think it's really important that you know the full scope of options at Chicago Booth. And um, sometimes you don't realize that a format might be a right fit for you if you don't know about it. So I'll give you a brief, brief explanation of the programs that Booth has to offer. Um, but the number one thing to take away from this, this section is that no matter which program is the right fit for you or what program you matriculate into, they all yield the exact same Booth degree. The same faculty teach across all programs. Our faculty that might be based in Chicago or in the US actually travel to London, travel to Hong Kong to teach those executive students. So you're never going to sacrifice that academic quality no matter what program you go through. Um, so of course, Booth has a, the uh, traditional full-time MBA program, uh, which is you know typically take, take up two years, move to Chicago, and fully immerse yourself in a program Full-time is great for those looking to maybe make a more significant career change or that are able to kind of take a step away from their, their work experience for a couple years. Um, and then the other three, evening, weekend, and executive are all part-time MBA programs. So they are specifically designed for those who want to continue working while they get their MBA. And again, you're gonna get that same degree. Uh, but the executive MBA is, is a little bit different when it comes to format and structure. So it's what we call more of a lockstep cohorted uh, format, so your courses are predetermined for you. So a lot of what I'll go into today won't exactly apply to the executive MBA program format, um, but it will apply to evening, weekend, and full-time. So if you have more questions about executive, reach out to us. We're more than happy to share more details, and, and I can answer questions um, later on after I'm done with the, the kind of the formal part of the presentation. Um, but evening and weekend programs, uh, again, it's the exact same curriculum, curricular requirements, faculty, and classes as the full-time program. So it's literally the same lecture that takes place during the daytime that would take place during the evening and on the weekend and any given week. So again, just want to make sure that you're aware of, of the formats. And this gives you a bit of a snapshot of how they, you know, a little bit about um, the, the pace of the program. So the full-time program is what you would typically expect. It's a two-year program, and most people end up doing a, an internship during their first summer. Um, so one sidebar on internships for right now, our current um, entering second years, I suppose, of those are in their internships this summer. The vast majority, if not all of those, have um, retained their internships, but they just will be virtual for the summer. So that's been really great. And we've had even a lot of alumni come out and help if any internship offers might have been lost or rescinded for various reasons. We've been able to find great placements for our, for our students in the full-time program. Um, but that's one thing that really differentiates the experience from if you're comparing full-time and say like the evening weekend programs. Uh, since evening weekend students are working full time, they they don't typically go through any sort of internship. It's not that um, you know it's not not something that they're interested in, frankly. Um, but many are looking to you know continue advancing in their career. Uh, so if you're thinking you know evening and weekend, most people complete the program in two and a half years by taking two classes per quarter. But you have five years to complete the degree. So if you end up taking um, you, know, you need to take a quarter off because of work or family planning, whatever it may be, you know, um, personal or professional things can come up, obviously, at, you know, while you're in the program. You have a lot of flexibility on the pace of the program, particularly in, in the, on the evening weekend side. Um, but thinking about kind of the population of full-time MBA, uh, typically, and I always, hate, I always kind of hate to talk about averages because it can be misleading, but, you know, average work experience for the, uh, the full-time program is typically around five years. But it's a really wide range. So if you're listening to this and like, oh my gosh, I've got a lot less than that or a lot more than that, but you really want full time, that's totally fine. Like you should definitely apply. We really truly look at everything holistically and greatly appreciate non traditional backgrounds in the program. Um, but again, we get a lot of questions about the averages, so average five years. Um, and then for the evening and weekend program, average work experience is around six years. So the populations um, are very similar. Uh, for the full-time program, the international percentage is about 31%, which is really great. And we're always looking to attract and, and uh, matriculate more international students. 
Um, and most of those do come in on the, the traditional F1 student visa. Uh, keep in mind if you're interested in part-time but would need an F1 visa, unfortunately, our evening weekend programs aren't designed for that. We cannot support the F1 student visas. So I just wanted to mention that if, if you're seeking the F1, full-time would definitely be the, the right um, option for you. Um, and for the full executive program to kind of round it out, typical average is about 13 years of experience. Again, that program is really designed for individuals much further in their career who want to continue advancing and uh, and just a, a little bit more of a different structure, as I mentioned before. So just a bit, a bit of a snapshot, uh, excuse me, full-time, um, as you might expect, to matriculate one class in the fall, evening, weekend, much more fluid. You can apply pretty much any quarter throughout the year for those. So this is where I'll spend a lot of, um, you know, most of this formal um, part of the presentation is really talking you through the Chicago approach. So the Chicago approach is our unique set of core values that really differentiate Booth from, from other institutions. And it really breaks down into three uh, components, pillars, however you want to think about it. And this is true no matter, again, no matter what format you're, what program you go to at Booth, or even if you take an executive education class, this Chicago approach grounds everything that we do and guides everything that we do. So one really important and critical piece of that is that we're very, we are discipline-based and it have a data-driven approach. So we often you know, hear, oh, it's Booth is just a finance school, which it's not the case, you know, but I, I like to always reframe that and say, well, it's much more accurate to think of it as being analytical and using data to help guide decisions. And when it comes to the disciplines, we know that markets and organizations are connected by principles of economics, accounting, statistics, and behavioral sciences. So we're going to ground everything in those, you know, foundations um, um, in that multidisciplinary method. But, um, you know, just because we know nothing uh, exists in silos, right? A lot of the problems you're going to be facing might seem like a, an accounting problem at its surface, but it might be more about strategy, right? So you're going to be able to learn how to pull from all of those disciplines to be able to come up with the, the best answers. And when you're, as you go through the program, you'll build an analytical toolkit that will help you with this, any business problem, regardless of industry or function. And it, kind of a simple way to think about it is that we teach you, it's, it's not about teaching you what to think, and it's more about how to think and doing that by asking the right questions. There's a lot of dialogue in the classroom, very interactive with the faculty and students. They want to hear your opinions. They want to hear your expertise. So asking questions is really where it all begins. So you'll get very comfortable with that. And then, of course, how to then ask you to find the right data, analyze that data, organize it, whatever, however you want to think about it, and to be able to apply that to the right decisions. The second piece, and this is one of the reasons, one of the things when we ask alumni, why did you choose Booth? Flexibility typically comes up um, one way or another. And flexibility, I can unpack this, you know, I could do a whole, you know, 45 minutes on the flexibility of the program. So I'll try to give a, a brief overview of how this manifests for you as a student and what this really means in the classroom. Uh, but we really believe in championing intellectual freedom through a choice um, and breadth of experience. So we have the utmost respect for the individual and know that you have unique ideas, perspectives, experiences, and goals. And we really give you, it's a, you might be familiar with the phrase like choose your own adventure. It's really a choose your own adventure sort of experience. We lay out a ton of options. You pick and choose what's best for you or what's most relevant to you. So how that manifests. We essentially have no required classes. So the one required experience is called LEAD, Leadership, Effectiveness, and Development. So every student, no matter what program you're in, goes through leadership training, which really starts with looking inward, finding your, your strengths, your areas of improvement, and really becoming self-aware to then help you learn how to become your own individual style of leader. And uh, you'll be a lot of our second year students in the full time program are really involved in lead. So that's you know really supportive and helping you work through those. I mean, just things like uh, presentation skills and, and presenting in, in front of a camera. You're, you're going to do all those fun things and they they can be very scary. But that's also what really can change you and transform you. Um, and just remember, you're doing it in a very safe, supportive environment. It's not like you're going to present for the first time in front of your board of directors. Right. You've got your classmates and faculty there to help you. Um, so, so everyone has to do lead, and then it essentially the program. Essentially, you can think about it as twenty required courses or two thousand units. Um, we have units instead of credit hours, and 
While there is no other like technically required courses, there are um, foundational and functional areas that everyone does have to take classes within, but you get to pick and choose the classes that are most appropriate. Uh, so for example, everyone has to take a class within financial accounting. That's a very core critical business foundation. But if you happen to have an accounting background and feel like you, you have really good working knowledge of accounting, you would not want to waste your time and money in that entry level accounting class. You would want to take a, a more advanced replacement. Um, and then on the flip side of that, many of our students have actually never taken a business class. So they would absolutely start with financial accounting, business statistics, microeconomics, those, those core foundations, and start from there. We, re we really appreciate people with you know, no business education and those who've taken those classes. And we give you the freedom to pick and choose the classes that are most appropriate for you. Um, and another advantage to this is that it really allows you to take classes even at the, at the, pay, at the time that are more relevant. So you might be seeking an internship um, at a startup. So you might front load your first year with a lot of the entrepreneurship classes. So having this flexible curriculum really allows you to do that, which many of our students and alumni, um, looking back, really appreciate that. Um, and then when it comes to building the curriculum, there are also uh, 13 concentrations that you can choose from, everything from strategy, um, business analytics, marketing, et cetera. Most people end up with three or four concentrations. So these are not like a major, not quite as like intensive, I would say. Uh, most concentrations just require like three or four courses to fulfill that. Uh, so it's not something you have to claim right away, just kind of know what you're interested in, and then you'll be able to kind of um, piece it together as, as you go. And I'll, I'll get to the support piece as well. We promise you're not alone in doing all of this. Um, but we find that this open and uh, flexible curriculum really leads to really dynamic and deep conversations because everyone's in a class that they really chose and they want to be in, not because it was a class they had to take, right? So, um, and it also helps you get to know people maybe that are a quarter or two ahead of you and kind of getting to know students from different areas that you might not see in some of your other classes. So you get to help with the network building piece as well. So with all that, I don't, I know somebody might be a little, you know, cause a little oddity, like, oh, I'm like on my own on this. I have to just kind of choose my own classes. That's absolutely not the case. We give you all of that, but you are deeply supported by so many different offices, starting with us on the admission side, to the leadership team, um, academic advisors, they can help you really plan that roadmap of your curriculum. They'll be able to give you advice. Of course, faculty are really great at that as well. Um, so you're never alone with this. That's where the supportive piece of the Chicago approach comes in. And it's, it's support for life, frankly. It's, it's starting from day one as we help you through the admissions process all the way through when you graduate. And we have Office of Diversity and Inclusion that works with our students and um, you know career services, student life, et cetera. I mean, there's many more offices I can name, alumni relations, all here to help you. Um, but certainly want to talk a little bit about career services uh, because it's a safe assumption that most of you are looking to pursue an MBA because you're looking for some sort of career change or um, career advancement and are really um, prioritizing that in your life. Um, why else would you be getting an MBA, right? And uh, career services is something I've been so impressed with in my almost 12 years at Booth, how they really, much like the utility of the curriculum, they tailor their approach to what you're most interested in. So if you're looking to you know, become an entrepreneur, they're gonna give you a different roadmap and, and guide you toward different activities compared to somebody who might be trying to go from uh, you know, consulting into brand management. That might be a little bit more of a leap. So they're gonna help guide you toward internships, toward the right um, campus recruiting processes, um, so as I mentioned before, the majority of full-time students do a in summer internship during their first summer, and those take place all over um, the United States and the world. And then most students go through the formalized campus recruiting for full-time jobs um, during their second year. And that's also available to those in the evening weekend program, uh, the, the, the uh, campus recruiting for full-time jobs. And we have all of the um, our, our career and employment report data online, we highly suggest that you look at that if you're just curious what industries people are going into, what functions, salaries, geography, all of that publicly available. So you should look at that and compare that certainly with other schools that you have on your list. Um, again, career services is a group you'll get to know very well um, throughout the program. And they've been really phenomenal in this uh, challenging climate that we're in now to uh, help people who might find themselves with you know struggles with the internship or job placements, that sort of thing. So they, they're a really phenomenal team. And then student life side, this is where, of course, a lot of the fun stuff happens, um, but it's also a huge part of your support system that you'll have in, in the program. So for the full-time program specifically, there are over 70 student-led clubs and organizations. 
for evening weekend, they were over 45. Um, so there are sometimes separate groups because of the when our students are available. So obviously full-time students have more daytime availability compared to those that might be working during the daytime. Um, but these clubs and organizations, if you want to hone leadership skills, you can try to become a co-chair of one of those, or you can uh, just participate in events. It's completely up to you. But they range from you know professional groups, you know, like the tech clubs, healthcare, um, consulting group, you know, any industry you can think of or function really for that matter. Um, to really special interest and fun and social as well. So there's women's groups, pride group, military. So most students, um, we see most students really putting, you know, doing a combination of everything. So you want to have the professional experience and build your experience um, there, but also be able to have fun, make friends, and, and kind of kick back and hang out. Um, and then there's also a big element of giving back to the community that a lot of students are involved in service projects and, and um, things of that like. But it's also a good way to think about it. You know, I mentioned earlier that you know second year students really help guide people through leadership training and also really are a great support and help coach you through you know internship recruiting. It's often what we describe as a pay it forward culture. And if you're not familiar with that, it means you know you somebody helped you, so you're going to help out the next group, and it and it pays forward like that. So that's a way that our culture is often described by our students. And really, everyone is really invested in each other's success. And the collaboration really takes place when you when you push each other and are comfortable sharing your ideas and asking asking the right questions. So I'll just share, share one data point that I think is a good, um, I guess, indicator of the success of the Chicago approach. So we survey our students when they graduate, and from a recent graduating survey on the evening weekend side, 95% of graduates feel well equip, equipped to take on business challenges they've not yet encountered. And I pulled that out because I don't think that's any more relevant now than it ever has. It's more relevant now than it ever has been to be able to um, live in ambiguity, live in the gray and work through these really big challenges that we're all facing um, right now and will continue to face. And, and you'll have the confidence to be able to take on those challenges. Um, and the Chicago approach really helps helps you go through that. All right, so I'm gonna shift gears a little bit and just go through a little bit of application process and then I'll get into some of the questions that you submitted in advance. So honestly, the application process is gonna look uh, pretty much what you see at every other school. Our processes are all very similar. Uh, so Booth does require the GMAT or the GRE, and we do not have a preference. Definitely take the one you feel that you'll do best on, and we always take your highest score. So if you take, take it more than once, totally fine. If anything, it shows you're dedicated and committed to getting that right score that you feel best shows your academic ability. And resume, letters of recommendation, one point on the letters of recommendation. We do prefer having one from your uh, current direct supervisor, but we also know there are sometimes situations where you aren't comfortable asking that person. So if that's the case, that's absolutely fine to use a colleague, a past um, supervisor, a mentor, et cetera. Again, we, we give you a lot of choice. And in the application, you will explain to us um, why you chose those recommenders. And I apologize, I'm gonna jump back up to the GMAT or GRE. I forgot to mention one of the most uh, frequently asked questions we get um, is the av are the averages. So the average for full-time for the incoming class last year was around a 730. And for evening weekend, average was around a 680 to 690, depending on the quarter and the program. Um, but the range is wide from you know uh, the, the lower 600s up to the upper 700s. So again, just wanted to share that because that comes up a lot as you're kind of planning your application. And I expect many of you are in that study mode right now. So those are some scores to shoot from. And those are on the, the uh, application as well, or excuse me, on our website as well. Of course, transcripts. You know, when you apply, you just uh, upload your transcripts and, and we review those. There are some short answers and the interview I, is one of the most fun parts of the process, believe it or not. It's very much a conversation with a student or alumni. And this happens, so you'll submit your application, there's an initial review, and then it's an, an, an interview by invitation. So once you're invited to interview, that's when you set those up. Um, right now, we are currently doing all interviews virtually. Uh, TBD, if that will remain, I could foresee us um, in the future having a combination, having some virtual available, as well as in person in your home country or city, as well as Chicago. But for right now, all virtual, obviously, with obviously safety and, and everything in mind. So I wanted to point that out. And uh, for those looking at full time, potentially to start for next year, that application will be opening around July 1st is our target. Um, and if, if you're even thinking about applying this year to the evening or weekend program, 
we actually extended that application deadline until July 1st. So you still have time to apply and we can always talk more about that um, offline if, if you're curious. But again, keep in mind, no major changes to the application. That was um, a question that came up um, when, when you guys registered for the event. And um, But it will be published. The actual application will be published soon. But that doesn't mean you can't be working on the other pieces, talking to your recommenders, and uh, prepping for the exam, doing prep classes, et cetera. Okay. And you might be curious like, what, what happens after you submit the application. Uh, we, we truly do take a holistic approach when reviewing. Uh, there was a question about non-traditional candidates, you know, maybe somebody with a lower GPA or less work experience. Again, it's all about you telling your story and why Booth is the right fit. So hopefully what I, what I spoke about today with the flexibility and the questioning and the data-driven approach resonates with you and you're able to articulate that in the application and talk about why Booth is the right fit for you. I'm sure there's certain faculty that really appeal to you or, you know, our, our um, foundation economics, whatever it may be, kind of bring out those Booth specifics is really um, an essential way to show, show how, how you really value um, or how you would be a value add to Booth in, in your unique perspective. Um, it might sound cheesy, but you should definitely just be yourself in the application. Don't write something that you think that we just want to hear. Definitely be yourself. We look for that. We look for authenticity and consistency across your application and interview. Um, but a couple words that kind of sum up our applicants and, and students is they're analytical, bold, curious, and collaborative. I think that's really, really true. And uh, we are looking for, of course, your academic ability. And it, it's an academically rigorous program. We're never going to lie about that. We never we would lie about anything, obviously, but we would never uh, downplay that because we know that, uh, you know, people come to Booth because they want to be challenged academically. And, and again, remember, it's a safe environment so you can you can take risks. A lot of our students get really comfortable taking risks, whether it's with an internship or a class that might seem, you know, very intensive because you know, you've got so much support. So we look for academics based on your undergraduate GPA and courses taken and grades, et cetera any graduate level work you might have completed, and of course your entrance exams, GMAT, GRE. Um, and then your career goals. We wanna know what, what you're interested in doing, you know, career-wise and what impact you've had so far in your career, what your interests are now and how you're gonna, you know, bring that to life. So you'll be asked about career goals, goals of course, throughout the application. And of course, looking for people who we feel would fit within that pay it forward culture and be collaborative with others and be um, really comfortable with individuals who have different worldviews and have different different perspectives and be comfortable sharing, you know, your ideas with those people and learning how to have a conversation with somebody who sees the world differently is so incredibly valued and so important. And we really look for people that will really thrive in that environment. So what we're looking for really reflects what we what I talked about earlier in the Chicago approach and, and what the, the program will really allow um, provide for you. Okay, just quickly before I, I go into a few other questions that um, well, you guys submitted in advance or might be submitting right now is, um, you know, unfortunately we cannot have people on campus and maybe we don't know what the fall will hold, so please keep an eye on that. But for the time being, we have many ways that you can engage with us virtually. We're hosting info sessions, webinars, live chats, et cetera, and we'll continue adding those to our website. Um, if you want to get updates from us, just go on any of our web pages and fill out a request for information. Uh, we'll let you know if anything happened regionally. Again, it's all going to have to be virtual for now, but we're doing our very best to integrate current students and alumni into those events because we know that's one of the most, much like these events, having those student panels. Those are just such critical touch points for you to learn about the program um, from those who are in it or have gone through it. Um, and then we'll also provide our email addresses to both the full-time and the evening weekend teams. Also, just feel free to reach out to us if you have any individual questions. We're happy to help kind of uh, through the process or anything about the program and help make those connections. All right. So with that, I'm going to look at some of the questions that were submitted in advance. Let's see if I missed any here. Oh, there's a question about, you know, um, attracting international MBA candidates. And I wanted to mention that we are now STEM, have STEM eligibility, which is uh, really attractive for those maybe looking to work a little bit longer in the United States. And, and we know that with the Booth degree and the MBA in general is a very portable degree. So then no matter where you're going to end up later on, and you know, whether you stay in the United States or go back to home country or somewhere else, the MBA is a highly valued degree. Um, but again, I wanted to mention that STEM eligibility. 
see if you guys have posted any questions here. Question about most popular unique booth resources for those interested in social social innovation entrepreneurship. That's a great question, and I highly recommend um, looking up what we call the Rustandi Center for Social Sector Innovation. They've been around for, gosh, maybe going on six or seven years now as one of our centers. A center, a student-facing center, does a lot of programming for students, alumni, and the community at large. One key event they do each year is called Onboard. It's a, a conference all about board leadership and how you know people in boards need to actually be diversified and how can we get more people at all you know levels of their career and industries involved in board leadership. Such so as one one example, uh, the Rustandi Center also uh, helps facilitate our annual new social venture challenge. So we have the new venture challenge every year and the new social venture challenge. So starting at, for those who are actually starting a company in um, in nonprofit, you know, it's be nonprofit or a mission driven company. Um, and I'll finally mention too, on that note, we have what's called the Civic Scholars Program, which is specifically designed for those with um, that working in nonprofit or government who are dedicated to those to those industries. And we have significant scholarships available for those. So information on our website again. If you work in nonprofit or government and want to stay in that area, look, um, check out the Civic Scholars Program. It's a great option. How would you say Chicago helps students with desires of changing career path? Yeah, it's a great question. And the full-time MBA is essentially designed for that, for those who want to make a pretty dramatic career change. So the flexible curriculum is one big piece of that. Um, so I'll go back to my example going from a, a little bit earlier, if you want to go from like a marketing function into consulting, you'll be able to take classes that that are really valued in the consulting world. Um, so you pick and choose, you know, based on that, and you want to partner that with student club and involvement, and uh, you know, join the consulting club and and get to know, you know, go to their coffee chats with all the consulting firms like McKinsey, you know, Accenture, BCG, whatever it may be. You can really immerse yourself in that, and then of course the career services piece is is a critical piece of that too. So if you know right away you want to make a career change, that's pretty significant. I would in your first week or two go set up a, a, um, an appointment with a career coach. They can help point you in the right direction, help you with your resume, and guide you toward um, the more career changer sort of activities. So, a question about is there anything in the app process you can lean into? Yeah, so as, as somebody who went to the U of C, you would have um, that Chicago approach is, is grounded in the, the the approach of the University of Chicago in general. So I think you would be very comfortable in that environment of diverse perspective. So I think you can talk about the culture and environment that you hopefully appreciated as, as an undergrad at the University of Chicago and be able to apply that and know that you'll get that same sort of, um, you know, as very similar sort of experience when it comes to, you know, challenging ideas, um, multidisciplinary cross-discipline is huge at the U of C and that, that um, is also true for the business school as well. Yeah, there's a question about any electives or projects that can help students uh, with a consulting career to, be career to better understand future uh, pandemic mitigation and response for businesses. Um, I can't think of anything like, real, like a new class or anything we've heard of. Right now we're still somewhat in triage mode, you know, getting everything set up, but there has been a lot of information. If you go to um, our Chicago booth review, you can see a lot of work that faculty are putting out there about whether it's pandemic specific or just the economy and employment and all of those sort of issues that are that are happening as a result of this. So can they get like a specific elective? Um, but when it comes to projects, we have students often do uh, pro bono consulting projects. And I could absolutely foresee students coming up with ideas or ways to help um, that fall under this this question of like the pandemic mitigation and responses. Um, but even beyond that, there's a small business uh, program, I apologize, I can't remember the exact name of it, but students can, can volunteer to help local small businesses in on the south side of Chicago. So they're obviously dealing with an, the, dealing with the, the results of the pandemic in other ways. So there's ways that the pandemic or not, that you can help small businesses help, help the community around you. Oh, sure, consulting lab courses. Yes, it's a great question. So when you see the word lab, I often um, liken that to experiential. So a lab class will be a lot of hands-on experience, typically with, uh, you know, with companies, right? So strategy labs, there's private equity. 
et cetera. So there are companies that it's a huge value add for them too. They get to have a small group of Booth students help them on, on an issue. So they're very well be a, be a, a company that has a, a project about how to deal with crisis management that they might have Booth students help with. So throughout the quarter, you'll be assigned to a company. And again, it will depend on which lab you're in, if it's your marketing focus, consulting, et cetera. But you'll you know work with that company. You'll have deliverables to them. Um, they do tend to be, I would say, um, work intensive classes. I don't mean to scare you that, but it is. It's kind of like a light internship, if that makes sense. It's not going to be quite as intense intensive as an internship, but it's a great way to explore. And actually, this would be a good answer for one of the career changer questions. A lab course is a great way to explore an industry that you have interest in. It can help you rule it in or rule it out, and uh, so that's something I'd add to that that question as well. But the lab courses are great, and we have more information on our website as well. You can always reach out if you want to learn a little bit more about that. But again, you get direct contact with companies, which is incredibly valuable for your resume. Oh, sure. Yeah, the Startup Summer Program is for incoming uh, full-time students. I apologize. I don't have the number in front of me, but I know I feel like it was a pretty large number, like more than a, a dozen or so students um, are involved in that in helping. It's essentially a a, a internship like experience as well before you actually start the program. So you have to have you have to be committed to Chicago Booth, and then you get to help uh, startups at you know there's obviously all over the country. A lot of them happen to be in the Bay Area where we started piloted this a few years back. But a great way to get that startup experience. Uh, startups are a unique work environment, and you might think you really want to do that, or you might just want to explore that. This is a great way to do that. And, and again, kind of like with the lab courses, it can help you rule in, rule out, find out if that's that's something you want to do, work for a startup, or maybe you have an idea of your own and you want to see how startups really run so that you can hopefully throughout the MBA program, start your own venture. So that's a really valuable program, not like a required component or anything like that. But for those who are interested, um, you're able to, to pursue that um, before you would start the program. So the question's about difference between applying round one or round two, there really is no difference. Um, we receive, you know, similar volume of applications, round one or round two tend to be the most popular. And, um, but the application process is the same. Um, you know, there's, there's really no advantage to a round one or round two. It's much more important and valuable that you apply at the time that you're ready. So you, if, if you're thinking round one, but you feel like you can really get that test score up, um, it's worth it to wait to round two to present the best application possible. But really no difference, just different timing, which is laid out on the website, timing of when you'll find out if you're interviewed and when you'll find out your decision. And of course, the wait list is an option like throughout all of the rounds, there's a chance you would, you would be waitlisted there. So something to keep in mind. Question about for recruiting kind of support, expect if they're looking to apply positions outside the US. And this is, of course, um, there are a lot of things we don't have control over, and I would definitely direct you to our employment report to see where students went outside the US. So you would wanna to talk to career services because um, each country and company for that matter might have a different policy on work visas. So sometimes it's easier to get a job with like PwC, for example, in London. So if it's a company exchange, at least if you're coming from say London to Chicago, there's a certain visa that's for company exchange. That's not the same as a traditional work visa. So you should educate yourself on work visas, particularly in the, the countries that you're looking for. So the US, for example, has more of a, what's called a lottery system. Other countries, I, I, I unfortunately can't speak to the, the ins and outs of their process. Um, but that's something, again, within your first quarter, definitely talk to career services about that and they can help make connections and, and give you all the resources at the very least to, to try to pursue those. But again, one thing I've learned is just kind of looking through those companies that have representation globally might be a, a, a more viable way to work internationally. Um, and you could also look for companies in the US that you might be able to get staffed internationally on projects as well. So the other ways that you can get that experience. Courses on focus on career and technology, social sector, both. So I mentioned a little bit before the Ruth Standi Center for Social Sector Innovation. In addition to programming and events and resources that they have, there are, as a class, for example, you know, scaling a social venture. So that focuses on just that, scaling a social so, social venture and how to, you know, it's one thing to start a business. It's a whole other thing to grow, scale, and maintain a business year over year. 
So that's one example there. When it comes to technology, um, there are, and these are some of the newer classes in recent years, app development courses, tech strategy courses. You could take courses in the computer science program, which have a joint degree with the computer science program. So that can help you build that. And then, but even without necessarily tech courses or the business analytics concentration, tech companies are hiring boothies at, at a really, really high volume. So Amazon, for example, has been the top hire out of our evening, weekend and full-time programs in recent years. It, you know, obviously a tech company, but those functions uh, range. It could be a finance role, it could be strategy, it could be development, whatever it may be. Uh, so it's very uh, popular and, and common these days. And of course, the student groups and technology and, and social sector, those groups are great ways to, uh, to learn even more about those and make the right connections. Oh, good question about venture capital and private equity. So that brings me to another center that we have, and that is um, called the Polsky Center for um, Entrepreneurship and Innovation. Polsky has been around for many, many years, and on the private equity side and venture capital, they have different resources. There's entrepreneurs and residents. Um, we have a private equity lab that's a really phenomenal lab that actually you'll get an internship at a private equity shop, typically in Chicago, not necessarily, but a lot of them are in the Chicagoland area. So that's a great uh, support system there. So to learn more, I'm, I'm getting short on time here. So Google the Polsky Center. And again, you can reach out to us if, if you missed that, but the Polsky Center, you'll see a lot of other resources. Um, but then some, like some of the most popular classes tend to be around entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial finance and private equity, for example, tons of classes you could, you could pursue there. Okay, I'll take this one last question. And uh, so this question about extracurriculars we look for. So, you know, it, it's uh, whatever you're interested in, you don't, don't force anything. We wanna know what you've organically been interested in and organically done. We don't expect that you have, you know, five, 10 organizations you're volunteering with all the time. It's also more about what your you know, interests are, hobbies, are you a musician? Are you, do you cook? Um, are you a scuba diver? Whatever it may be. So it's hobbies as well as extracurriculars. But we do like to know that we're bringing in people who will be active in the community and give back. So it helps us know what you're passionate about to know what sort of, um, you know, extracurriculars you might be involved in. So it's, there's no, um, you know, menu or no, there's no like requirement or anything along those lines. We just want to see candidly and honestly what you're interested in, have been involved with. And, uh, and of course, it's beyond just volunteerism. It's also your hobbies. And, and sometimes it's even, you know, spending time with your family helps us just learn what you value um, in, in life. All right, so with that, I want to thank you. I'm sure there's more questions. Do not hesitate to reach out. I believe Anna um, has posted or you'll get some follow-up emails um, for us, but our website is great as well. It has a ton of information and I can't thank you all enough. We know it's a trying time for many reasons. Thank you for spending 45 minutes with Chicago Booth today and we absolutely look forward to working with you in the coming years. Thank you.